Governments and central banks have flooded their economies with trillions of dollars of stimulus to cushion the impact of the pandemic. A lot of that money has fueled a boom in various asset classes. One beneficiary has been the market for NFTs, or non-fungible tokens. These digital files are what Bitcoin is to physical currency, and they're starting to sell for millions of dollars. Paolo Monticilio has more. It's one of the most expensive short videos ever sold. This 10-second clip by the artist Mike Winkleman, who goes by the name Beeple, sold for more than $6 million last month. And it's not even the graphic designer's biggest hit to date. This digital collage of 5,000 images, created one square a day over 13 years, was sold at a Christie's auction this month for just shy of $70 million. I started on May 1st, 2007, and if you look at the piece, in the upper left-hand corner is the very first every day, and in the lower right-hand corner is the very uh, last every day, or, or the 5,000th every day. The JPEG file is the third most expensive piece of art sold at auction by a living artist. But unlike Jeff Koons' $91 million rabbit sculpture, or David Hockney's $90 million portrait of an artist painting, every day is an NFT or non-fungible token. That means it only exists digitally, so in theory, it can be copied pixel for pixel with relative ease. But it's authenticated with the use of blockchain technology, the same decentralized computer system behind cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Same argument as, you know, you can go into, into the loop and take a picture of the Mona Lisa and you can have it there, but it doesn't have any value because uh, it, it doesn't have the provenance or the history of the work. The NFT game is attracting plenty of big names. This month, Kings of Leon became the first band to release an NFT album. And Twitter founder Jack Dorsey is selling his first tweet on the NFT auction site Valuables with the highest bid currently at $2.5 million. In basketball, an NFT of one of LeBron James's most famous shots sold for $200,000. Dapper Labs, which runs the NBA's NFT trading platform, says the business has so far been a slam dunk. It's been really cool because we've launched the uh, private beta, the public beta in October, and already since then we've processed over almost $250 million, million in transaction volumes. The art world has seen its fair share of surprising sales, like this banana taped to a wall for $150,000. What the NFT trade is reinforcing is that beauty and price will always be in the eye of the beholder. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. Well, for more, let's go to Maria Paula Fernandez in Berlin. She's an NFT and blockchain analyst and advisor at Gollum Factory, a European marketplace for digital assets. She's also the founder of the Department of Decentralization, a group that promotes the use of open source software. Welcome to the program, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, just as some of us were getting our heads around uh, this idea of cryptocurrencies, we're now being faced with having to understand NFTs. We heard there uh, a bit of an explanation of what they are, but could you explain to us uh, what are NFTs and why have they become so popular or increasingly popular right now? Right, so um, first of all, nice to meet you. Um, so basically an NFT as it Strict, you know, in the strict sense of the um, of the tech uh, of the technology, is actually a computer program that in uh, that is uh, sorry that is both immutable and on the blockchain. Uh, one blockchain can be Ethereum, another blockchain can be Flow, like they mentioned before in the report. And these uh, computer programs are actually uh, also a part of the digital ledger, which logs provenance and are in uh, non-fungible, which means that they cannot be divided or uh, transferred easily without the consent from one user to the other. Mm, okay, and as we heard in Paolo's story there, I, I think many people were first made aware of NFTs when Beeple's uh, artwork was sold for almost $70 million last week. What makes NFTs so valuable? 
Well, you know, to understand the value of NFTs, we have to look a little bit into what constitutes value and a collectible value. Of course, when you are thinking of a regular, uh, you know, collector's item, it can be, you know, a Beanie Baby, or it can be a book, or it can be an NFT. It all carries a meaning. And of course, there's the utility value, which here is not very clear because it's a digital asset embedded to a, a computer program or a smart contract. So that's not very clear, but it does have certain utility value. And then you obviously have the sign, the, the signed value, uh, uh, which gives the value to you know the proper NFT or you know digital art as uh, as a whole which is you know what what is valued here so we're seeing here for in in the in the example of people we're seeing that this is a really well established artist that has grown a cult uh, following in the ethereum ecosystem and beyond because he has uh, worked uh, for a very long time with musicians as well so there's a lot uh, to uh, to add into the value of the NFT. Sometimes the value of the NFT relies into the fact that these are one uh, these are these are one of a kind pieces. All of the NFTs are actually one of a kind. Even if you have a series that is you know just a copy of the digital piece mm -hmm. of each other, the NFT, the underlying technology, that's one of a kind. You cannot duplicate it. So you know, that also uh, goes into the value. Okay. Now, as we heard, also heard in Paolo's story, Beeple managed to sell another one of his artworks in February for $6.6 .6 million. What mm -hmm. we didn't hear was the fact that uh, the, the person who bought it, the Miami-based art collector Pablo Rodriguez Frail, actually bought that same artwork for $67,000 last October. So this kind of activity is fueling this idea that perhaps uh, NFTs could be the start of another uh, speculative tech bubble. Do you share those concerns? The fact that an artwork that was uh, bought for $67,000 last October sold for uh, 6.6 .6 million just a few months later? Absolutely, I I do share those concerns. You know, I am working in the industry for more than three years now. I've uh, published a couple of papers uh, on NFT. So this is a technology that's actually very dear to my heart. And I want to be able to grow the ecosystem in a mindful and sustainable way. So, um, of course, I worry every day about these kind of things. At the same time, I know that bubbles are not necessarily a bad thing. You know, alongside with speculation comes adoption. And, you know, if you come to think of a parallelism that they actually make with uh, the tulip fever in, in Holland, actually, you know, Tulips are still a really big part of the uh, of the Netherlands economy. So mm -hmm. if this spurs into something sustainable, I'm I'm up for the speculation, honestly. Okay, well, I'm sure that we're in for a bit of a wild ride when it comes to NFTs. Maria Paula Fernandez, thank you so much for helping us to understand that space even further.